Namdi. Namdi? Yes. Okay. I did not forget how to pronounce your name. I've yeah, been watching the show for a while, man. You've got a great show. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. When, when, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you heard from Timmy and, and, and some of the uh, um, other people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Man, I, I love the interviews, man. Yeah, I love, the, I really, especially love the um, Elder Barge interview. Yeah. Yeah. He's, you know, sometimes I pinch myself that actually, because I, I started the year always thinking I would love to interview him just because of his personality and, and his stuff. And, yeah. and when it, when it finally happened, um, you know, just matching his temperament. So he felt comfortable speaking and sharing and being able to talk about stuff that he probably hasn't really been able to share elsewhere. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. But I mean, it's, it's definitely good to, to be able to get you uh, on that. And I think um, I, I did a little introduction before you came in just to say that um, most of us who sort of would always start um, New Jack Swing and Guy, we'd always know that, okay, there was before Guy, there was kids at work and you were the lead singer and and then, you know, Gene Griffin and everything. And but then as I said recently when I did interview Jack McGee, she said, Yeah, yeah, Clorel's there. He introduced me to Ted and stuff. And it was almost like, Oh, okay. So you were in the mix, but then of course people wonder what happened. But we're not just we're one we know we're about the whole career and the whole package. So we want to start off by asking where you were sort of born and raised. Well, I was born in New York City. You know, I was born in Harlem, um, but I grew up in Midtown Manhattan in New York City. And, you know, I guess the first person I met was Timmy. Yeah, but, but, okay, Timmy but, was like, I guess. No, but, but growing up, uh, you mentioned, I mean, growing up in, 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 in that area, what was it? I mean, as a, as a kid, what, you know, did you get into, were you singing in church or school or how did you get into? No, I was, <laughs> I was just singing in the house. I was in pain. Fully shy, okay. painfully shy. Like I, I honestly, I, if I can be honest, the the most reason why I'm I'm not a, a a big famous pop star is because I was so shy as a kid. You know what I mean? I was just so shy, like painfully shy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And only reason why I even um, got with Timmy and Teddy and them is because Timmy heard me humming, humming or singing to myself in the street or something like that. And he walked up to me and asked me, asked me, you know, do I sing? Oh, I did said, you yes. know him? I didn't know him, no. Wow. He just walked in. That was our first conversation. He said, he said, yo, you a singer? I said, yeah. He said, um, he said, do you do you know how to um do any Jackson Five steps? I said, yeah. I said, I said I could learn, <laughs> but on the inside, I knew them all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my greatest inspiration, you know what I mean? And then he asked me that I wanted to audition for his group. You know what I mean? So I, 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 went, I went to his house and auditioned for his group. I used to like roller skate. I used to roller skate to his house. Wow. <laughs> I never had money for bus fare or anything like that. So I would, just, I would roller skate to his house as a kid. And I auditioned. I sang, um, I sang I Do Love You by GQ. And I sing, I found that girl by Jermaine Jackson. That's how that's how I, that's what I auditioned. And I, I did well because the record was playing, you know what I mean? But then when it was when it came time to the to the rehearsals, I I was just so shocked. You know, he was the lead, he was the lead singer when when we first got together. Wow. Yeah, Timmy was the lead singer. Timmy was the um he was the 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 songwriter, the lead singer, the leader, you know what I mean? He organized everything, he got everything together, and he was the man. You know what I mean? He was the man. And um if I, you know, I don't know, I don't know how 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 in depth you want me to get to in the beginning, but if I Yeah, um, you can, yeah. This is this is yeah, this is an if, open show. Take your time. But you know, I mean, I guess in, in those days, in those days, when I first met Timmy, um, you know, he introduced me to Teddy, but Teddy, Teddy wasn't really in the group. Teddy, Teddy, he was in the group before me, but he at the time when I met him, he wasn't in the group. He was in his other group. You know what I mean? And, you know, eventually he he came back to the group. And, you know what I mean? And, you know, and then everything's left, you know, it's spent from there. Like in those days, it was me, Timmy, Teddy, Larry, which, which was Timmy's brother, um, Gary, which was his other brother. 
another man named Larry that was um, a bass player, Greg, uh, that was a guitar player, Pete, that was the drummer. <laughs> I mean, Swire, which was another singer, and a couple of girls that were, that was in the group, you know, because you know, you know, it was always different girls in the group. So it was like a whole host of people in the group. And one day, I don't know why, but the manager we had at the time, his name was Ron Thomas, he's like a dad to me. He, um, he took us on, he took me, Timmy, and Teddy on a trip to Kentucky. And me, Timmy, Teddy, me, Timmy, and Teddy was walking in the street. We were just walking in the street down there in Kentucky. And Teddy turned to me and Timmy and said, This, this is the group right here. Wow. And that's how that's how it, it ended up being just the three of us. He was like, This is the group right here. You know what I mean? And it's not, it's not like we didn't, it's not like we left the other guys. It's just that we were the most serious and consistent. Okay. You know what I mean? So we 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 just stuck it out, stuck it out, stuck it out, stuck it out. You know what I mean? And you know, that's just that's what happened. And so we went we went to the studio and we went to a studio and we recorded a song that two songs that Timmy had wrote had written called um one was called Togetherness and the other song was called She's My Baby, which was on and which ended up being on the Kids at Work album. And um uh we recorded the demo in like a half an hour like a, maybe a half an hour to an hour. We were so rehearsed. We, we brought in the band, they played the music, we, we sang it, knocked it out. Three weeks later, we got a deal. But how, so how old were you when you met Timmy? Huh? How old were you when you met Timmy? I mean, we were, we were all around the same age, you know, teenagers, you know what I mean? All around the teen, you know, teenagers. 13, 14, 15, I don't know, you know what I mean? So long ago, okay. you know what I mean? Okay. We were, all, we, were, we were all kids, and um, I don't know. You know, the years so long ago. I, I get, I get. You know, yeah. I forget, I forget, I forget ages because I don't really deal with ages because <laughs> I'm just a <laughs> Yeah, but then did you, did you, did you, did you ever think that this could be serious, or was it just like a, a hobby? Oh yeah. Oh, for, it was dead serious for us, for me and all of us. We were like, like I'm telling you. I was shy, but in my in, in the inside, I was like, oh hell yeah, I'm doing this forever. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. Timmy and Teddy was the same. Like I remember, I remember I remember Teddy saying to me one day, Teddy said, he said to me, he was like, I know I'm gonna make it. Wow. And you see what he did. <laughs> you can see the look in his eye. You can see the look in his eye. He was 2000 percent sure he was gonna make it. You know what I mean? Cause it was Teddy's. It was Teddy's connection that got us the deal. Teddy, Teddy, Teddy knew Gene. Teddy knew Gene, and he gave Gene our 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 tape. And you know, you know, it was just timing. Cause you know, New Edition was hot at the time. Yeah. And that's how we sounded. We sounded like New Edition. So that was the that was the hot thing. You know, everything is timing. You know what I mean? Cause it's so funny when you think about it. Cause Aaron, Aaron, in a sense, took my place. You know, we had broken up and then Aaron took my place. But it's so funny to think, I think about it a lot because Aaron, Aaron's sound was so different from my sound. And because the sound was so different from my sound that when Aaron, when Guy became hot, that was what the labels were looking for, that sound. Because, you know, after Guy, then it was Jodeci and, yeah, yeah. and Aaron Paul and all these people. And because I, I didn't have that sound, I got lost in the sauce. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't really get back. You know what I mean? I yeah. couldn't really get back unless I unless I unless I chose to sing that way, which I just didn't. Because I could sing that way, but I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, but, but during those days, what, what was your sound like then? What were you you know, were you like like I mean, just Ralph? Like Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Ralph Tripp. The thing about me, man, I whew, I I had the I and still to this day I have the ability I can sing like I can sing in a Michael Jackson Elder Barge style as an adult, or I can sing like Michael Jackson as a kid. <laughs> as weird as it may sound, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I just can make I can make my voice do anything, but because that was my um my my greatest inspiration, the Jackson Five was my greatest inspiration. That's what I chose to do, you know what I mean? Because that's initially that's what New Edition was doing. The Jackson Five. We were all doing trying to be the Jackson Five in, in those days. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. So, but but what <laughs> what was the the did you guys? Because I well, Timmy did mention that you know you guys did cross path with New Edition. But could you remember crossing paths with New Edition back in those early days? 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. They were they were friends of ours. They were friends of ours. They were they were our friends. They I'm telling you, man, I'm very impressed with New Edition. You know why I'm so impressed with New Edition? Because when we met when we met them, see, you gotta realize you could you could be a you could be a nobody in one town and be a complete superstar in another town. Yeah. Especially in those days, you know what I mean? Because that's before social media. So in New York, we were popular. In Boston, we were superstars. Wow. Yeah. So so when we met New Edition, they looked at us as peers. They thought that we were on their level. You know what I mean? Because the first time we met New Edition, we went to Boston. We went to Boston to um to, to do a show. Mm. Right. And I saw Bobby Brown and 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 I saw Bobby Brown in in, in, in the crowd. You know, and I'm you know I'm a silly ass kid, so I sneak out and go run, and I, and I you know I introduce myself. Hey, what's up? You, you Bobby Brown? I said, yeah. You know what I mean? And then next thing you know, I go back to the dressing room, and then Bobby and Michael came back to the dressing room to meet us, and that's how the friendship began. So we did we did a show we did we did the show that night, and honestly, uh, if I'm not if I'm I'm not exaggerating, it was like as if the Beatles were performing. The girls went. Crazy. They went crazy. It went so crazy that they had to, we couldn't finish the show. They they snatched us off the stage. Wow. The bodyguard snatched us off the stage and threw us in the in the limousine. And the girls was running top speed trying to catch up to the to the limo. You know what I mean? It was crazy like that because we were, I don't know, man. It's just it makes me sad to be honest when I think about how how big we could have been mm. you know what i mean because look at teddy by himself look at teddy by himself you know what i mean and then look at timmy as a songwriter and even as a, the thing that the side of timmy that that people don't know about is timmy was an amazing performer wow amazing he was an amazing performer you know what i mean and his vocals his, his vocals were like the guy from ready for the world um melvin riley jr yeah Try to imagine Melvin Riley Jr., but amazing showmanship and swag like D'Angelo or somebody. You know what I mean? Wow. I mean, amazing. He was amazing. And I was an extremely good dancer and, and performer myself. You know what I mean? And even Teddy. Teddy had amazing swag. You know what I mean? So together, and plus they were instrumentalists. You know what I mean? Teddy played keyboards. Timmy played bass. And those days, I wasn't really a musician. I could play stuff, but I wasn't really like a real musician. I just, you know, I was just a singer. It was amazing. But what messed, I'm gonna tell you what messed us up. What messed us up was the fact that the record company made me the lead singer solely. Um. You know what I mean? Timmy was the lead singer. Tim, well, by the time we got signed, I guess we both were the lead singer. Yeah. And we were split. We were split leads, but. The record company made only me the lead singer. And the reason why they did that because I sounded like like I was eight years old. <laughs> okay. But it was the sound of the day. You know what I mean? That, that real nasally, high-pitched mm. Michael Jackson sound. You know what I mean? And that's why they did that. But what it did was it, it put a wedge between us. It put a wedge between us, you know what I mean? And to it just it just ended it forever. You know what I mean? Because I don't care how how much you love people when you want to be when you have it have it in your mind that you want to you want to um play a, a certain position in in your group and the record company takes that completely away from you and gives it to your other to, to one of your friends it's always going to be that that little bit of tension you know what i mean like he didn't you know i mean we we didn't fight or anything like that or, or have have any kind of tension between us but i'm just guessing this is something because we never talked about this I'm, I'm guessing that you know this put this this it's like me him being in kids at work with me took away from his dream, which was to be a, a lead singer. And for some reason they wouldn't let him sing. And I don't I never understood it. You know what I mean? I never understood it. I didn't like that the producers did that. You know what I mean? They wouldn't let him sing nothing. Like he sang one part, one part on one, one song. But when we did the demo for Kids at Work, he sang half the stuff. Matter of fact, he sang more than I did. Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I, I never liked the fact 
that they, that they did that. Like it was really bad where, I mean, one time we were in the studio, just, you know, just, we were in the studio getting record, getting ready to record, but we were just, you know, doodling around the piano, like Teddy was playing the piano and I, and Timmy was singing something, right? And our manager, which was Gene at the time, he, 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 walked, into, he walked up to Timmy, he said, stop singing. That, that's your lead singer right there, wow. pointing to me. When he did that, I was like, this is, it, it scared me. It's like in, in my heart, I knew it was the beginning of the end. Hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. But also check out our membership, which is um, a good way of getting some exclusive videos and actually long videos from day one. But thanks again for watching. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks.